that change has finally come to Alberta. Rachel Notley won the election big time in Alberta on Tuesday night, the first new Democrat ever to do so in that province as Premier-designate. What is she going to be like? Well, hopefully she'll take off that Che Guevara wristwatch that she loves to wear even to the legislature. Seriously, Che Guevara, that communist revolutionary and murderer. Uh, I get it if you're a college kid wearing that, it's sort of fun, but for a grown-up in the legislature, it suggests a radicalism and a childishness. Hopefully she'll switch watches, but what's she like since she was elected? Well, let's look at her first public speech, literally on election night, when she put those wild days of a few weeks ago behind her and acted as a grown-up or tried to. Let's go to her speech. Here are four clips. Let's start with the first one. You know, to Alberta's job creators, great and small, in the energy sector and in every other sector, our government will be a good partner. And we will work with you to grow our economy and to secure a more prosperous future for every Albertan in every community. Well, that's encouraging that she supports the energy industry, which is so important. I find that encouraging because, of course, in the past, Rachel Notley has attended anti-oil and gas rallies. Here's one again from her wild, wild youth so many weeks ago. No pipelines, no oil, no gas, no fracking. Yeah, maybe she's grown up a bit, but maybe not because of course when a new Democrat says she's pro-energy, you gotta check and see if she means real energy that we actually use and work with, oil, gas, coal, the stuff that we, the real people use, or the kind of schemes that new Democrats like, like uh, solar panels and wind turbines. So I'm not quite at rest yet on the issue of oil and gas because I don't know if she actually supports it. Indications are she hates coal, which is the source of most Alberta power, and we're going to bring in high-cost green schemes. That's what I'm worried about. But let's move on to the next clip. Take a look at this. Together, together we need to start down the road to a diversified and resilient economy. Finally, to end the boom and bust roller coaster that we have been riding on for too long. And you know, it won't happen overnight, but we must start and we will. But what does it mean to diversify away from the boom bust cycle? The boom bust cycle is what happens when the price of oil and gas goes up and comes back down, but that's not within her control to stop. That's a result of world commodity prices, the demand for oil and gas in places like China and India. How could the Premier of Alberta, how could the King of the World do anything to stop that? And saying that we shouldn't develop oil and gas because it's cyclical is foolish. What country in the world wouldn't love to have oil and gas? It's like saying, oh, I don't want to be a gold miner, even though I've got a lot of gold in my backyard, because the price moves up and down. Yeah, well, you're lucky you have that alternative. 173 billion barrels of oil in Alberta makes that the obvious industry of choice. It's one of the reasons Alberta is so rich. Does Rachel Notley really believe that we should diversify away from this blessing? of oil that Alberta is so lucky to have. Does she think that the four million entrepreneurial Albertans have been making wrong choices every day in their lives to want to work in that industry and support that industry and invest in that industry? Does her lifetime of what, being a careerist political insider, give her a better insight into what makes money and what doesn't? She's never been an entrepreneur in her life and she would tell businesses, no, don't go into oil and gas, go into some new scheme. Well, yeah, she's a new Democrat. So what she probably means is that she will subsidize industries that she likes and she will penalize or regulate those that she doesn't. When someone says diversify, what they really mean is they want to pick the winners and losers. It's the NDP way. Here, here's her next clip. So to our province's skilled and professional public servants, to the teachers who inspire our children, <laughs> and the healthcare professionals who care for the sick. <laughs> to everyone who gets up every day and contributes to a better province, we are looking forward to working together with you. Yeah! 
Well, now she was back in her safe place, wasn't she? Talking about her real fan base, her real friends, government sector workers. Seriously, does she think that the downtrodden, the oppressed people in Alberta these days are government workers? Government workers in Alberta are paid more than in most other provinces. They do not get recessions like the province does. They don't get that boom-bust cycle, do they? There's no boom and bust in the government workers union. You always have a boom time. Your pay always goes up. There are no layoffs as there are in the private sector. Alberta right now is going through a bit of a recession in the oil patch. Tens of thousands of jobs vaporized, mega projects canceled or delays. But she thinks the people who need a good encouragement are government union workers. Of course, her husband is a union boss with CUPE, so perhaps that's her safe place. But it seemed out of touch with the spirit of the times, which is no more cronyism, no more special deals for special interests. With the PC party of Jim Prentice, it was always lobbyists or people with an inside track. Have we seen the beginning of the new inside track in Alberta, Rachel Notley's union friends? One more clip. And I'm looking forward to partnering with all of Canada's premiers on many, many issues, including the need for a national approach to the environment and Canada's... And to work with my premier colleagues as well, to build Canada's energy sector so that we build bridges and we open markets instead of having a black eye. That is what we're going to do. A national approach, approach to the environment. Well, I suppose that sounds good. Some issues of the environment are for the federal government to decide under a constitution. Some are for, for the provincial governments to decide. But nowhere is it in our constitution that other provinces get to decide Alberta's environmental future, no more than Alberta could decide Quebec's environmental decisions. It's federal jurisdiction or provincial jurisdiction, not 10 provinces having a veto or each other. Is this again that same first year university debate club style stuff that really sounded good to the NDP student club, but now the NDP student club is in government and they haven't really grown up yet? Does Rachel Notley really mean that she will take instruction or veto from other provinces who are looking after number one and like to use Alberta as a punching bag. I don't know. I'm speculating. I look forward to finding out in the future. She says she wants to build bridges. That sounds great. But what Alberta actually needs are not bridges, but pipelines. And it's important that we see she become a champion for that. I don't know if she will be. She says that Alberta has a black eye around the world. Well, I guess it depends who you listen to. Alberta is loved across Canada. I know this because so many people move to Alberta to work there and, and benefit from Alberta's largesse and transfer payments. The black eye she's referring to is from NDP activists who smear the oil sands and their friends in the Suzuki Foundation and the Tides Foundation. You shouldn't govern by what your haters say about you. David Suzuki will never like the oil patch or Alberta, and I don't think he and the fact that he's trying to give Alberta a, a black eye, I don't think that that should decide what the Premier of Alberta says or does. Those are four clips from Rachel Notley's election night speech. They're not very detailed, they're not very specific, but they're not very reassuring either. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Ezra Levant.